faces. Hello and welcome to Nostalgia Maker. In this video, I am building a workbench, specifically a workbench design called the Poor Man's Workbench created by the popular woodworker and YouTuber, Paul Sellers. Link of his channel in the description below. It's called a Poor Man's Workbench because it is fashioned from common 2x4s, a much cheaper medium than other specialty wood. However, nowadays construction grade lumber is not cheap and it just kind of sucks. It is generally weak, spotted with lots of knots, and is prone to warping. Both these reasons have kept me from starting this project. That is, until I resourced this old glue lamb beam during a renovation from my in-laws house, which was built in the 70s. This glue lamb I discovered was made from what is commonly referred to as old growth pine, which is highly sought after because of its tight green patterns. After planning and scraping all the paint off from the beam, I saw how amazing the grain really was, and I knew I would be able to build my poor man's carpenter's bench. But actually, for cheaper, because the beam was free. So I guess I can call this the Brookman's Carpenter's Bench. Next, I cut it to rough length and width with the help of these dowels and my soon to be restored joiner as a catch at the end of my table saw. So those are the sides all squared up. So these are the three slabs at this point. This is going to be the apron slab. So at this point, what I'm gonna end up doing is splitting this slab down the middle uh, so that I have two slabs for my aprons. Aprons are flat boards that run lateral along the length of the workbench. These aprons are actually a very integral part of this workbench. They will be essentially the structure that connects both sets of legs, which creates a unique way of creating strength and rigidity for the overall bench. Splitting this board was easier said than done. As you can see, I cut the slab on either side as deeply as I could with the table saw and my idea was that I would be able to simply cut within the grooves with a handsaw to finish the job. However, this took forever. I may have spent a whole day using various handsaws that I had to try to get through this thing. Towards the end, I was on the struggle bus. That's not how I wanted that to turn out. So yeah, you can see how splitting boards like this isn't the most uh, efficient way to do it. Um, so you can see what the handsaw is doing is just kind of doing that sort of thing as I'm making a, my cut all the way down it. And then the big issue that we came across is I got to here with my first cut and then decided to come into the back to finish it off. But this other cut was basically on top of this other one. So it just wasn't going to end up meeting. What I'm gonna do is plane this as uh, flat as I can, as square as I can. Yeah, use uh, this on the inside for the aprons and never see kind of the, the damage that I did. I attempt to uh, glue down some of the uh, wood that was uh, separated from the surface on this side. The uh, board broke. Great. I should be able to glue it together. Oh well. So that, that's how the uh, glue up is going on that uh, apron. <laughs> I expect to have this much trouble with uh, with this slab, but I still think it'll turn out pretty good in the end.
Okay, so these are my apron boards now all squared up and true and, and cleaned up quite a bit. So these are gonna, this is gonna be the side facing out obviously. And I'm pretty happy with them. Okay, so here's the other side of the boards. And <laughs> I mean, I really wish that the way that I had cut it turned out better, but you can see here, there's these divots just with a handsaw as it kind of fluctuated throughout. And then of course this big tear out because I was getting too impatient and the, uh, the cut lines wouldn't meet. Um, but I'm thinking that it's important to fill this in because the aprons are a pretty integral part of this type of design. Um, they're really the structure that keeps the bench really rigid. Each of these aprons are gonna have two step cuts uh, to house the, the legs of the bench. I'm not exactly sure where that's going to be, but I just really don't want it to be in any of these spots where it's not flush or even or square. So I'm thinking of using Bondo. three extra pieces from the off cuts of these three slabs. What I would like is for the top of this bench to be 100% comprised of this old growth glue lamp. And with the three main slabs, I have the two slabs that are gonna go on the top and then the aprons, so I'm good there. But I need enough wood for my weldboard. And this obviously isn't long enough uh, for a weldboard, so what I'm thinking of doing is doing some step cuts, essentially cutting steps into each of these three boards, running along essentially the individual boards of each of the slabs, and then joining them together that way. Now what you see here is a marking and cutting technique called a knife wall. You will see me do it a few times during this video. Essentially it allows for an accurate guide when cutting with a handsaw. Now just to clarify, a well board or sometimes called a tool well is part of the bench that is lower than the majority of the bench where you can safely house some of your tools. It makes for easy access for the tools you need and provides a safe space for them as well. So after beginning the process on some of these step cuts, I remembered I didn't really need a well board that was going to be 11 inches wide. And so right here, I'm just thinning it down and that's gonna save me some time on making additional step cuts that I don't need. together fairly well and the glue up and clapping went well. Now after all that I'm going to split this board as well. I learned a lot from the last process I stuck with one saw this time, a traditional style saw that was large and stiff enough to keep from wandering. And I started from one end to the other. Oh, and I sharpened it too. That helps. Turned out much better this time. 
a bit of planing and flattening and the well board is cut to dimensions along with the two top slabs and aprons. Now it's time for the legs. I only had enough of the old growth glue lamb for the top of the bench. Luckily, I was able to source some more reclaimed material in the form of this railroad tie. It too was free, and so far this bench is only costing me time. This is me breaking down the legs. This railroad lumber was both a pleasure and a pain to work with. It was very easy wood overall to work with, especially when planing. It finishes very smooth, but it also stank like new tires. Cutting them to length, flattening them, and adding some nice chamfers. All right, just finished up the legs, finished shaping them, cutting them to length, and planing them down, making them all square. They're very, very smooth. They're not even sanded. This is all just from using the planes. I think they're pretty interesting. I like them a lot. I mean, I'm not sure what railroad ties were made of originally if this was some kind of pine or oak or some other type of uh, tree um, but all of this coloring all this dark coloring is is just straight up oil that they penetrated into the the railroad ties but i think it really kind of gives a very unique looking grain to the wood so I like him. I like it. Now that I am done with the legs, I am going to use the rest of the railroad tie material to make the braces for the legs. Here I am cutting it down to rough dimensions. Okay, so I got the braces for the legs all milled out. They are in rough shape, but I'm gonna finish them all up once uh, before I get them connected onto the bench. Um, now, these legs unfortunately are about an inch short of what I need. I'm going to extend these four by using these two. So I'm going to split these in half and then essentially with each of these halves add it to um, one of the braces. And essentially my joinery is going to look like this. So the added piece is going to be right here and I'll cut everything, glue it all up and then also add a few pins to make sure that's going to be strong and reliable. So they're not legs, so I'm I'm sure this joinery is going to be fine. It's going to be glued up and be definitely strong enough, at least for the braces on the bench. It seems odd at first to cut material in half so that I can make it longer, but it was necessary for me to be able to utilize all of my material. The process was fairly simple. Just cut the material to length. Cut the various joints using three saw blades stacked together, cleaned up the cuts, and glued it up. So what I'm going to do now is take the clamps off of all the braces and get this floor cleaned because this uh, sawdust from the railroad ties is very, very fine, but it's also, it sticks to your shoes and I've been tracking it in the house and that's not good. So I'm going to clean up again. Now I am 
marking where the dowels will be placed. Drill them all on the drill press and hammer in the dowels. First with a little ball peen hammer and then for some reason I use the big one for the other ones. And there's my favorite little hand saw. Gonna put a fresh edge on my number six Stanley and watch the grain come to life. So if you have a properly tuned up plane, it can make a world of difference as far as finishing your work. So this is all of it just rough roughs on, and then I just plane this half. That took me a really short amount of time, and it's just like glass. So um, I won't even have to sand this. So I'm planning on making sure everything is plain, smooth, and Looking good. That's a big daddy one. That's a big daddy one, huh? Good job. Hey, did you get curls? Yeah. Good job. The baby plane? Does it have a name? What's the name? Stinky Pot. Stinky Pot? Uh -huh. Okay. After finishing the braces, I essentially have all the main pieces that will comprise my bench. So now I will start cutting the mortises and the tenons to fit it all together. There are many ways to cut mortises. Perhaps the easiest would be to use a square mortise drill bit, but I don't have those. A lot of people will drill through the material with regular drill bits and then clear out the rest of the mortise with a chisel. I've never liked that method, at least for me, it usually results in a sloppy looking mortise. I prefer a traditional method. By cutting straight into the material with a chisel every 16th to an eighth of an inch or so, the chisel naturally creates a deep slope cut that goes through more than half of the leg. Then I flip it over and do the other side where I meet into the previous cut. Okay, so at this point, I need to figure out the distance in which I need to set my tenons on my braces that will be going in between the legs. So first to do that, I need to figure out at what distance will I be placing these legs, All right? And then essentially the distance in between. So the distance between the legs, or the distance that I'm gonna be placing the legs, I need to account for the total width of the bench, which is about 26 and a half. And then I need to account for the fact that um, parts of the legs are going to be sitting essentially inside. So 28 inches overall minus eight inches is four inches for each of the legs it should be 20 inches in between so what i did here this isn't these aren't actually dado blades these are actually um two um cut blades and then one rip saw blade stacked together and so it just gives me a thicker blade to pass through all the tenons a lot faster, so that's what I'm gonna use. Kinda looks like a chainsaw. Now I will use the same method I used to cut the joints for the braces to make my tenons. After cutting them on the table saw, I will use a hand saw to rip the edges and then use a small block plane to clean up the saw marks. If I used an actual data blade on my table saw, then I wouldn't have these saw marks, but data blades are expensive.
All the mortise and tenons are the same size, but if you really want tight joints, you will fit each tenon to a specific mortise. And to keep them straight, it's traditional to use Roman numerals, like you see here. And it fits in really well. If I just push a little bit more, go, it, it'll go all the way. Or it does, so, um, got that. So now I need to do this end, which will connect into this tenon right here, which I'll make as number two. I want to chamfer the ends of the tenons. So they slide in better. And it just looks better. Everything looks better when you chamfer it. There we go. Got her in. That is a finished tenon. So I got number one. And then number two sides and they're both fitting really well so right now i'll work on the upper brace for the number one and the number two leg which is going to seat in here and here the two top braces require this special joint as you can see i cut this small three quarter inch notch which allows the brace to be flush with the top of the legs while providing the same strength as a regular mortise and tenon joint does. So, went through that process twice, glued everything up, and now I'm going to add dowels to strengthen the joints. Also, I think it will look nice to match the dowels and the braces. This mobile drill press is very handy. Very glad I bought it. It would have been very difficult and awkward to try to drill these holes using my standing drill press. This was filmed in October. I put this little zombie to work with the baby hammer. I think those dents in the wood make for a great character. Now I'll clean up some of the edges on these legs and put the top board on with some regular construction screws. And then I will start the recess in the aprons to house the legs. I just finished the first recess that is going into the aprons for the legs of the bench and it turned out okay. So uh, how this is gonna work is the four inch leg is gonna fit in here and then there's going to be a wedge. That's why this is angled. There's gonna be a wedge sitting here that's going to um, continually tighten uh, against the leg as I work on the bench. Um, now I didn't film this one because I was kind of using this first one as a practice before I filmed and there's a few mistakes. I was really just doing this to, to learn the best way of, uh, making this recess. I'm not doing it with chisels the traditional way. Um, 
I don't know, figured using a router and uh, some other things would make it faster and and hopefully a little bit more straighter. But overall, um, all the edges are very straight and square, which is really what's important. Uh, not the prettiest, but uh, I think I can make an improvement on that in the next ones that I do. So I saw this trick of cutting into wood with the, uh, an oscillating blade, with an oscillating tool or a multi-tool from Diresta. And I think he was doing some dovetails with it. But there's kind of an old way of making sure that your chisel cuts are straight and that's by having a uh, 90 degree wall or something up against the cut. And so I figure I should be able to get a really straight cut by doing the same thing, but also having a quicker way of doing it by using uh, this tool. I marked three quarters, which is the depth that I needed to go to right here. I don't know if you can see it, but try it out. I don't know if I'm the first one to come up with a specific method to cut these recesses but it worked like a treat. Very quick and very neat. The only thing I wished I did differently was using the router to hog out the bulk of the material. I should have made additional parallel cuts in the recess at the same depth and then chisel away. I ended up doing that with the recesses in my wellboard and it was much easier and a lot less messy. So far, the only expense of this bench were these brass flathead screws. I just like the way they look. Very nostalgic. That's me laughing at Fraser. Never watched it before. I'm a big fan. Now I'll add a bolt to each leg, square it up, make it tight, and double check that it's not askewed. I'm almost done at this point, and before I put the top boards on, I'm going to use the plane one more time for a nice finish. I'm putting some wax paper on the legs to make sure I don't glue the top to the legs. This design will allow the bench to be disassembled into basically four parts. The legs, and then the top and aprons, which will be glued together at a right angle. brass screws and then playing the aprons flush to the top boards. 
These planning shots are my kind of ASMR. Doing the same exact thing for the other side. So things have come along pretty well. Just finished gluing the top boards to the aprons, and then I just finished planing down the edges of the apron flush to the top. So pretty happy with everything so far. The tops and the aprons, they are glued together, but they should still be able to be disassembled from the links. And Right now, I'm going to focus on putting in the weld board. It's pretty much measuring up to six and a quarter inches. Uh, there's a few tight spots here and there, but my plan is just to use the plane to uh, fit in everything pretty much perfectly. I'm going to lay it down so that I can draw out the top of the braces here on the legs so I can make a recess in the weld board so it sits much lower in here. I want to get as much depth within the weld board as much as possible. Like I mentioned before, I'm using the same method as the recesses I cut for the aprons, except I use my chisel to get rid of most of the material before I knock it out of my hands and remove the edge. I thought the wellboard would look a lot better if I added this 45 degree chamfer on the edges. To do this, I screwed in a board that was cut at a 45 on the underside of the wellboard. You won't be able to see those screw holes on the other side when it's flipped over. I am almost done. So I'm going to clean up one more time and add chamfers to all the edges before I add my finish. These chamfers not only will make everything look all around cleaner, but will protect the edges of the bench from tearing away while working on it. Very quick, very light sanding with 400 grit, and I will clean it up before I put on the wellboard. It's really coming together very happy so far. For the finish, I like to make my own concoction. Depending on what I'm making, I will use a different mixture of oil-based polyurethane, wax paste, and boiled linseed oil. For the bench, it's going to be very little polyurethane, and the majority will be boiled linseed oil. This will make for a stronger finish than just regular boiled linseed oil, but still thin enough for easy refinishing in the future. I use a variation of this concoction a lot. If I want a stronger finish, then I'll add a larger ratio of wax and polyurethane. 
It's very similar to high-end finishes like Rubio Monaco and Odie's Oil, only much, much cheaper. And much like everyone else, putting the finish on is my favorite part. Now, I put the finish on while it was still hot so that it soaked as deeply as possible uh, in the wood. I put another coat on a few hours later and wiped off the excess. I like it. And it's finished. I have been wanting to build a workbench for a long time. I think I've been sitting on this glue lamp for two years now. I just never had the time or opportunity to take on a project like this. It's not the prettiest bench and it's not the most well-made bench. There's quite a few mistakes, a few oopsies here and there, but to be honest, I would not trade the process that it took to make this bench with my own hands for the nicest bench that money could buy. I love the fact that I was essentially able to make this for next to nothing, repurposing old material and giving it new life. That's one of my passions. Uh, the things that I make is, is taking things from the past and, and repurposing them for new and better use. Just really excited to have this bench now. It's going to really help me and allow me to work on other projects, other things that I would like to create, make, restore, and essentially journal it on Nostalgia Maker. So thanks for watching and I like it. Good old boy, Lindsay, y'all.